Brofist to you all, for Friday has arrived one more time, and Dragonflight has also arrived to rousing applause, at least for now. Everybody seems pretty goddamn happy with what Blizzard has put forward, including myself. I have had an excellent week of trying out Dragonflight. I've been to Dragon Castle, where I met Brienne of Tarth, and did stuff with all sorts of Blizzard content creators. It was very awesome. There's a big video coming, I believe, by I gn about that visit that i did i had to stream from a castle and i have done glory of the dungeon hero in dragonflight before before i ever stepped foot into valdraken <laughs> that is correct i have still not done the valdraken zone or corrected my dragon glyphs from that zone but we have caps we have done a mythic zero sweep we have done our achievement we have our fire slugs and that is what dragonflight has been all about for me is doing whatever the hell i want to do and not feeling forced to do any of it and it has been so fun it has been so, so fun to play the game that way. Just decide, hell, I want to check out this thing today. I want to do that today. And enjoying it along the way. I capped just as I entered the third zone. There is a lot of XP to have. I'm interested to see where alts take us as to how quickly we sort them out when we do get to alts. But for now, I have so much more to do in my main. I assume everybody's having fun and doing what they like to do in dragonfly and all the mains have been chosen and everybody's getting good stuff i got very unlucky in my mythic zero only collecting like four pieces of gear useful pieces i got a weapon and things like that and it looks like i'm going to be tanking because of course we have set up a community within dragonfly and we are looking to be doing some heroic progress with viewers and then see where that takes us i don't know what lies ahead for mythic a lot of people have those questions i don't know the answer to them and i'm free and easy because the race to world first is coming up i will be doing casting for the race to world first but not only that tonight i'll be sitting down with mr rich campbell and mr asmon gold because all craft is taking place so for our live audience that is going to be in about four and a bit hours from now all craft will be taking place and for you guys over in the youtube world and the podcast world who listen to us on spotify and apple music and google music and all those kinds of things you'll be able to find all craft when it is released Oh, watch the VOD. I assume they don't delete the VOD or do anything like that. I actually don't know. It's nothing to do with me. Yes, the WoW community is cross-faction. I believe it is full for now. We are at 1,000 members, uh, but we'll see how many people drop out and disappear. As with all WoW expansions, even if I'm having a good time, there will be those who uh, are not having a good time and decide to leave it behind. So we'll keep a peepers on that and free up some spaces as and when it becomes appropriate. I'm sure a lot of people have thrown every alt they've got in there so they can chit-chat, even though they never intend to play those alts. That is always something that does happen as well. But for now, it is, of course, drama time all over the internet. For nearly 10 years now, people have been sending us stories on a weekly basis of the weird and wonderful things that happen to them in video games in mmos been anonymity becomes a thing and if you should have a story to share with us or this inspires you in some way you can send it to drama at preachgaming.com or you can simply go to our website where we have a submission form for you as well either or will work you can email us or you can use our website and if you like drama time on our website we have every single story we've ever told all with hashtags and search criteria if you like a particular type of story or a story you heard long ago and you can't quite remember the details but you know something in it that should be able to find out what you're looking for now apparently i have to read this because apparently i owe an apology now good luck good luck <clears throat> good luck getting an apology out of me it depends what i did i have no issue apologizing but i would like to know what for because uh hmm who knows who knows what i may have done uh okay i believe this is the names i think and the title of this tale will be in defense of mrs diddly do i know a mrs diddly did i do something to mrs diddly i don't think i did i don't think i would ever do anything to mrs diddly she sounds like a fine woman uh and i would uh, never do anything untowards or ungentlemanly towards miss diddly I would never do that. I am not guilty. Okay. We have a note from a good lady Bex here who checks these stories before they arrive in front of my face for drama time. Note from Bex. Mike, remember 
A story a while ago about two Irish people in separate Final Fantasy guilds whose guildies joked they must be related because they're Irish until it actually turned out they were related. They found out they were because they had a mutual relative who had DJ stuff nicked from outside a gold club. A golf club, I think that was. They told you about an ice cream place called Scrum Diddlies. And Mike, they are super pissed off about it. What did I say? Did I slag off? Is this, are you angry at me about ice cream? Because there's no apology coming if you're angry at me about ice cream. Like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, let's get into this. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike. It is my particular delight to inform you that you owe an apology. Okay. Earlier in the year, I sent you a story of found family. Quite literally, it's two Irish cousins called Why Not Sharks and Tramali, when you read it, discovered that they were actually related after meeting, coincidentally, in Final Fantasy XIV. Well, one of those cousins, our free company leader, Why Not Sharks, had to have a fairly serious surgery a short while ago. Naturally, instead of allowing her to recover in peace, we all had to visit just to check in on her and see all was well. So very, very bravely, I opened my wallet and gave money to Ryanair, and soon most of our free company had descended upon Dublin. That's actually really fucking nice. You all went to see her? That's actually really cool. To be clear, uh, we did wait until after she was discharged to recover at home. We didn't all crowd into the hospital room. You see... Final Fantasy XIV just won the community game of the year. Since we're all in Dublin anyway, we should meet up with the other FC, whom you named the Shamrocks. <laughs> these guys, the, the, they're, they're the ones who named it the Shamrocks, okay? Look, I always ask these guys for the names of guilds. That's not on me at all, okay? I choose the name, but they're the ones who come up with it. I didn't do a goddamn thing. <sighs> While we were at it, we would address a serious issue. As despite knowing of each other for months and being related, why not Sharks and Tramali had not actually met? And we had to fix this. I still don't see why I need an apology, uh, to give an apology here. There was no question that we were all going to get along. How else would it go? The two free companies have been playing together for more than a year at this point, and we're still going strong today. There was, of course, some debate over what we would do during our time together in physical proximity, and in what order we would do it. Would we visit with Shark, meet each other's cats, do Dublin Castle, ringing Bono's doorbell and running away, go to the Leprechaun Museum... All the classic Irish things. But there was one thing that we definitely all agreed that we should do. We should visit Scrum Diddlies. When you read the original story, you compared Scrum Diddlies to Baskin Robbins. Now, <laughs> I have never been to a Baskin Robbins, okay? It's just the only other, like, ice cream place that I know. I have never actually been to a Baskin Robbins, so... <clears throat> Mike, this will... Oh, it's way worse than a, a Baskin Robbins. This is actually, like, considerably worse. All right, chat, help me, right? Are we impressed with Scrum Diddly's and its crooked stop sign outside it? Are we supposed to be impressed by this? Because we're not. We are not impressed by this, Right? <clears throat> looks nice love it you guys are trolling you guys are hard trolling you're ridiculous no you're impressed oh shut up shut up i can't trust you guys having now been and visited and tasted scrum diddlies i can assure you that this is a haven a haven for the sugar lover and though it was november in ireland mr and mrs diddly have already thought of that. They had the warm winter menu. The hot scrummies section. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> they have the hot apple crumble. That sounds nice. Warm berries also sounds nice. The coffee volcano doesn't sound nice. 
and hot Belgian waffles. Mmm. Mmm. All right, the hot scrummy sounds okay. Six quid for an ice cream, though. Six euro pounds. That's expensive for an ice cream just because it's got a bleeding flake in it, right? That's a lot of money for some fucking milk and ice. You know what I mean? I, I don't I don't know, man. It's not just ice cream, it's an experience at Scrum Diddly's. Right, gotcha. Gotcha. Now, my friends, I will confess on my first visit to Scrum Diddly's, I did not order from the hot menu. I ordered the lemon meringue and it was disappointing. I had hoped the lemon would be a bit more tart than sweet. But my goodness, the Irish cream makes a difference. The fresh strawberries on top were perfect. The meringue was a crunchy dream. <laughs> wow. Mm. I still don't want it. Right? Gimme? Oh, come on. Puke at fruit? Well, all fruit? Just universal fruit? You're just like out? You're just out at any form of fruit. That's it. Not doing fruit whatsoever. No way. <laughs> just all fruit is gone. <laughs> Garbo. Yuck. Ooh, strawberries. But as I alluded, this was only my first visit to Scrum Diddly's. I wasn't going to call you out on the basis of a singular check. So a couple of days later, I went back for the hot apple crumble. It won't surprise you to learn that the cup was hot and cold and hot and cold and holding it in one hand while trying to also eat was a challenge, but it was so much worth. Apple, cinnamon, crumble, ice cream, and just relentless joy. Mike, I have to ask, I have to insist that you apologize for the comparison you made. Mrs. Diddley was undeserving of that. I've even written a space in this story for your apology. Here, the next few minutes are yours. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, a few months ago, I made some disparaging comments against Scrum Diddleys and their owners, Mr. and Mrs. Diddley. It has come to my attention that my comments have hurt the entire Irish population. After discussing the matter internally with my team here at Preach Gaming, we would like to tell you that we will do better. We must do better. And that things like this can never happen again. From the bottom of our hearts, from every fiber of our being, I speak not only on behalf of myself and everybody working at Preach Gaming. We would just like to reiterate once and for all that none of us give a shit. And... If your ice cream was to fall to the floor, I would shrug in a way that suggests, oh well. Thank you. And going forward, we will just attempt to do better. Thank you. Thank you. I will close. <clears throat> I will close with a brief update for the curious. The stolen DJ equipment that started the discovery was never recovered. We suspect it was shipped across to the UK to be fenced because the English are pause. See, this is why I don't give out apologies because you, you kind of suspected I may have given you an apology before you then wrote the sentence disparaging my entire country. And <clears throat> frankly, that will not stand. And I wait for your apology, okay? But Trevally's dad was able to replace most of the stuff and things are going fine. Why not Sharks is doing well after her surgery and our visit. I will soon be back in fine form, ready for the next Savage with us when with the Shamrocks. There are many more cat boys still in Eorzea, who I emote at, but do not talk to. I would have thought anyone from the UK would understand a nodding acquaintance. We don't, not with the cat boys. <laughs> I think they happen a lot more in MMOs than you would give credit, but I don't expect to unearth any more long lost connections. Wishing you, the team, all the very best. Mm -mm. Honestly, I, uh, I'm not an ice cream fan, so... I'll say what the fuck I want. <laughs> I'll say what the fuck I want. I, I mean, ice cream is fine. It's all right. But, like... I'm not going to be, like, really excited for ice cream. You know? I don't think so. Are we? 
Are we going to get... Is anybody super excited for ice cream? Of all things? I, <laughs> ice cream is fine, but like, I'm, I'm not excited for ice cream. There's no way. No way. Terrible GM. Here we go. Or... Oh. Is it RP? Do we have to decide? Okay, all right. I need some... <laughs> all right, this is on you, chat. We need a Slipknot-themed guild name. A Slipknot-themed guild name. Oh, sign me up. Sign me up. A Slipknot-themed guild name. Okay. The Nine, that's good. <clears throat> People equals shit. Psychosocial. Slippery Knot. Pulse of the Mag... The Guild of the Maggots. Snuff Muffins. The Maggots. Uh, I think I actually like Slippery Knot. I think I'm going to go with Slippery Knot. Thank you, Will. Slippery Knot. That sounds good. <sighs> and we need one Wrath of the Lich King themed guild name. And Ledude. One Wrath of the Lich King themed guild name. Insidia, Obliterate, The Blades of Duality, Gnome Stole My Bike, Argentum Dawn, Demise, Cold and Bitter, Arthas' Bedsheet, yeah, the Ice Crown Swim Team. Perfect. That'll do. The Ice Crown Swim Team. We've got Slippery Knot and the Ice Crown Swim Team. All right, perfect. Good afternoon, Sir Preach, and the rest of the judge, jury, and executioners that have become your chat. That sounds like one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Raise your gavels high. I think judgment is in order. <clears throat> I have been absolutely loving the combination of FF14 and Sea of Thieves drama stories on Spotify, but I felt like writing you a story from my past that me and my friend were talking about recently. I'm writing to you probably my seventh or eighth story I've sent you. Thank you very much. I am the king of heroes himself, the lord of normal raiders, the hero who goes to terrible guilds. Oh, it's you. Oh, God. Will you please? Please stop. 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 You have to stop doing this stuff. Who are stuck... Uh, I help guilds who are stuck on ch Champions of Light Normal. And I bring you the tale. I am the very savior slash arsehole, depending on who you are. Yeah, so if you've not met this person before, they travel, they're a mythic raider, and they travel to guilds that are struggling with normal mode progress and help. <coughs> Guidance provided. <sighs> like an angel from upon high. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Mikey. I don't really play much in terms of MMORPGs anymore. God bless. <laughs> so I have no more horror stories for you as of right now. But I do have a question. In this story I tell you, is it roleplay or is the guild master just an egocentric jerk? They involve the same GM in both guilds and she brought about drama from two different expansions as well as multiple factions. Let us begin. Is this like a puzzle we have to riddle out? My audience is really good at puzzles. Let's go back. I want to take you all back to a moment that's almost arriving on the on the uh, classic servers, the glorious Ulduar patch. This, of course, is taking, taking place during the original Ulduar. Ulduar was my first real go at raiding. I had done the old school raids like Black Temple with a bunch of level 80s and whatnot. However, I had not done current raiding. A lot of my time was spent leveling alts and making gold with my cousin. My introduction to Ulduar was beautiful. After Flame Leviathan, I didn't really have any ill feelings to the fight, but it confused me as to what was going on. I think in hindsight, the fight was new and interesting, but I had a thought at the time. Why am I getting gear to get into a vehicle and kill other vehicles? The bosses after, of course, gave me more of an introduction to real raiding. Flame Leviathan, yay or nay? Quick! Yes or no? I'm yes. I really liked Flame Leviathan. I thought Flame Leviathan was good. Yay or nay? Nay, nay, yay, yay, nay, yay. It's still a mixed bag to this day. I was a big fan of Flame Leviathan. I liked it. They mixed some good teamwork into that fight and made it fun. A nice way to start the raid for me. Did not like clearing the trash to Flame Leviathan, though. That was really boring. There was just way too much of it. <clears throat> However, 
I had no one to talk to about my first time raiding in real life. I had no friends who did it. My parents were happy I was enjoying my time, but they didn't understand the game. My brother didn't care since he was a sport person. <laughs> and my cousin who had gotten me into playing World of Warcraft just made gold. That's all they ever did. So like a 14 year old that I was at the time, I just told all of my friends. They were Call of Duty players and they thought that my game was fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the one with the fairies in it mate what are you playing the one with the fairies in it you're playing the fairies game yeah right pretty good mate what are you gonna do jizz off over some elves or some shit fucking loser well that is all except for one person Davy. god bless Davy. Davy was super interested in what I was saying he sat there attentive to what I was saying he asked questions, told me he had raided in vanilla WoW. The idea of vehicle combat in a raid sounded amazing. I'm now realizing he was raiding AQ40 when we were like 9 or 10 years old. <laughs> I told him about Ignis the Furnace Master, XT002 Deconstructor, the Iron Assembly. I told him how you killed a huge, huge man and used his body as a bridge after we had slain him. He thought it sounded amazing. C -c Can I come to Uldawa? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, to play with my friend, a true friend, I restarted the game. Made myself a druid to match with his warrior over on the Alliance. The only thing to do was to find a raiding guild, which actually was harder than you think for the server we were on. My server was in the America, and it was an RP server. Why did you... <laughs> Except it was a shitty RP server. And there was never much RP going on at all. It was adapted by the player base there to be a PvE server. But we just didn't have very good players to be considered top, middle, or even really low tier. It is not Wormrest Accord. While other servers were probably taking a break from all the times they'd smashed 25 Heroic Lich King and not really giving a toss about the Ruby Sanctum, mine still hadn't beaten Trial of the Grand Crusader. We just couldn't find players who knew how to press buttons. Or possibly any interest in raiding at all. We see another guild advertising. The Ice Crown swim team in trade chat. So we throw a whisper to the recruiter and we're in luck. They're looking for a healer and a DPS. -er. Since my friend is a Fury Warrior and I'm a Resto Druid, the invite comes very quickly as a care package. In my whisper, I tell the leader I have some knowledge of Ulduar. So to possibly entice them to invite us given my raid experience. It was very, very, very valuable on this server with no good PvE players for finding someone with good raid experience. And if you had any at all, it was a huge plus. So I'm not surprised when the invite came my way. However, I was surprised with the idea that we only get the invite if they can make me the raid leader. Oh no. Oh no. 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 Mm-mm. No. No, <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, no, <laughs> red alert, <laughs> red alert, <clears throat> I quickly pop the brakes, whoa, 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 I, I, I tell the leader, I've only ever done up to Collagon, like, no, 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 to which the GM, Hugs Optional, says, the fuck is a Collagon? Huh. So, there it is. But, I'm 14 years old and about to be given the title of raid leader. So I say yes. Of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. I am thrilled that I get to get everybody organized and I am clearly certain that I can lead us to potentially serve a first or maybe even one of the top world spots. This is before we had even done a first raid. Yeah, yeah. Aspirations, yeah? 
aspirations. We could go all the way to the top if we just work together. We begin our first raid night a few days later, and I am the raid leader on my druid. Davy on his warrior, hugs optional, tanking on her death knight, and seven others. Our first raid night goes fucking beautiful. Beautiful. We one-shot everything except XT because there was some big server disconnects and downed him as soon as we got back in. I honestly felt like a fucking god. One raid night, one shot. It felt amazing to be leading these troops, my troops, and claiming victories and loot for them all. We're about to begin our descent towards the inside. Collagon, Iron Assembly. But hugs optional, the GM says, I have to go now. We had been raiding for about an hour. But we call it with the GM leaving. On a high, I think. Let's stop now. Yes, yes. Let us stop now while we're riding this wave of victory. We all say we'll reconnect sometime this week and continue clearing the instance. Everyone quickly starts logging off. I tab out of my laptop to check some other fights in Ulduar so I can be a bigger, better raid leader. I'm now going to be stepping into fights that I haven't done before. And I need to be prepared because my troops are literally a walking killing machine. I then get a text message from Davey. Dude, the fuck is happening? I text him back asking, what do you mean? What's wrong? I, I logged out to eat for like 15 minutes and now I'm guildless. I tap back in and realize it's me, three people from the raid, and Hugs Optional who are still in the guild. Every other member of the guild had been removed. We had about 50 members in the guild. And Hugs Optional had kicked them all. So, Hugs Optional's online, so I ask the obvious question. Hey, what's going on? Why have you kicked everyone from the guild? We are faction changing to the Horde. I have kicked all the non-essentials. I have kept the ones that I like. You just kicked out the entire raid team? Now, I kept some people, as you see. I think, after this raid, that we are the elite members of this guild. We're going to go to Horde because that's what raiders do. You were good at raid leading, so you can stay. I would like to make you my guild assistant, a very high title in our new guild. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm not faction changing. What are you... You didn't even ask. It doesn't matter. When I faction change, it will take my guild with me. So you'll have no choice but to be the horde with us and be a part of our new vision. It's not how it works. And I'm not doing that either. Bye. I swear to you, Preacher, this is what she said, word for word. Submit to my will, or be cast out into the frozen wastes. <clears throat> Hugs Optional has gone offline. <laughs> so as you can imagine, team... I chose to be cast out. <laughs> the fucking crazy bastard. <laughs> Just to make a point. I didn't even know you could faction change a guild. I was very aware that you couldn't just change my character for some reason. Sure, maybe she could take the guild with her, but I knew that kind of service would not just like move every single character. I have the slightest clue if she knew what she was talking about. I guess she was just waiting for someone to raid lead for her because no one else could be bothered. As soon as she found me, she made this executive decision. Either way, fuck her. <laughs> IG quit. I just wanted to play all the while with my boy Davy. Hugs Optional did faction change though. And that was the last I had heard of Hugs Optional for quite some time. 
for the following Wrath of the Lich King period. Me and Davey raided together. We did Trial of the Grand Crusader with one of the only current content groups that were on the server. I say groups because it was just a bunch of people from several guilds. We didn't form an actual guild. We beat 25-man normal Lich King, beat Heroic Blood Queen 10 until we all decided to just chill for the rest of the expansion. Summer had arrived. And since we weren't pushing for anything, I just unsubbed for a bit. I stayed unsubbed until the summer of 2011 due to an event taking place in my real life. Right before school ended for my junior year, which is about 16 or 17 years old, me and a few mates were playing the soccer ball and Davey accidentally kicked my leg. It cleanly broke because my doctor explained, fucking hell, Davey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Either way, my summer was fucked. So I decided to break out the old laptop and put some wow on. Davey joined me. Oh, Davey did that on purpose, right? That's Davey's way of getting back into WoW. I'll break his fucking leg and then he'll have to play WoW. That's the game plan. I'm just going to break his fucking leg and then he'll have to game with me. Davey joined me and we faction change over to the Horde because as we were told, that is what raiders do. Davey sent me a message in the pink the day that we swapped over. He said he got in touch with Hugs Optional. I don't know how. Battle tag was not out in the old war if memory serves and had instantly become an officer in her new raiding guild. Oh, no. I mean... Just don't. <laughs> I was confused. Isn't Davy non-essential? That's what she called him in the past, but now he should be an officer. But, I mean, whatever. We're playing some WoW. I joined and did not have to raid lead because Hugs Optional had found somebody else. Our new raid leader was the one and only Ladude. He was in one of our four guilds on the server that beat Lich King 25 Man Heroic before the Ruby Sanctum came out. So I thought, all right, we've got some fucking gamers, yeah? We got some gamers. We're going to crush some face, smack some ass. I'm rocking the big tree. Davey's still slapping with the warrior. Hugs optional on a death knight tank. And Ladude, who had nice raiding experience, also tanking. And his big friend Rob, who was a pally healer. 10 out of 10 squad. We had enough of the guild for a 10 man and decided we'd try each other out, you know? Get used to playing together, that kind of deal. It was summer of 2011. The Firelands was approaching in three weeks. We wanted to see what we were working with in terms of our raid roster. 4.2 on the horizon. We went to Bastion of Twilight, 10 normal. We crushed through the trash and got to Halfus Wormbreaker. We fight this beast of a thing and down him, one shot. The loot drops and the first thing I see is a purple necklace. I think to myself, fuck yeah, dude, I actually want that. The Wormbreaker's amulet, nice. Then I looked at the stat stone and saw that it was definitely a Holy Pala necklace and decided, no, 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 I'm not going to be a greeter. Rob, you take it, our Holy Pala. I say, grats to him, and that was that. Except, Hugs Optional had different plans for the Worm Breaker's amulet. Um, give that to the Resto Druid. His necklace is blue. Of course he can use the stats. No, 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 no. The stats are like shit for me. That's a holy palanek. He's also wearing like a blue one. I'm like waiting for one that's good for me. No. Didn't you hear what I said? I said that you get it. Le dude. Who is the master loser? Give it to the druid. But he's passing it. Why, why give it to him if it's not good for him? Uh, please just give it to me, says the Holy Pally. Really, give it to him. It's not a big deal. This is not a good necklace for me. And it's just a necklace. Something better will drop. I don't enjoy repeating myself. I don't think so. No. You will take it to him because that is what I have decided. Or else, if we can't follow instructions, then the raid is over. If you don't take it, as I have said, 
that I'm afraid you will be kicked from the guild. And not only that, my dear, I'll do something much, much worse. Okay? Okay. So I take the necklace. Hook's optional, then whispers me. Put it on. And if she doesn't see me wearing it in our next raid, she will kick me, la dude, and rob the holy pally for conspiracy. <laughs> I was baffled, baffled as to what the fuck was going on. I was so confused, but it's an item level upgrade. So, I mean, could be worse. So I slapped it on. La dude, Davy and Rob and the other raiders are also just like, what? Oh, don't care. Confused. Mixed up. So we push on. We beat the Bastion of Twilight that night. The next raid night, we go to the house of the dragon himself, Nefarian, in the Blackwing Descent. We beat the first two bosses fairly easily. Wipe on Chimera on a few times because we have a few non-raid ready people. Put him, down, put him down no less. Wipe a couple of times a Maloriac and one shot at Tremedes. Then we get to the big, big, thick cock himself, Nefarian, and his lovely sister, Anixia. I'll be honest, the first time I saw we were going to be fighting both of the dragons, I was like, how in the fuck are Blizzard doing this to us? We would need 40 people to do this. We drop down to undead Anixia. Lord Victor Nefarious begins his long RP talk, and in the meantime, we are burning Anixia down to 15%. But swap over to Nefarian for some damn. We tank them on the opposite sides of the room with a healer and tank on each side, as we've been told to do. Everything's going well. No deaths. Nefarian down to 80%. Oni down. Phase 2 begins. The room is filled with lava. We swim to our pillars. Melee deeps on the adds and the pillars. While range stick dots, but focus on Nefarian. Still no deaths as we enter that final, final sweet phase of this encounter. It was a great fight, right? Most people remember the Nefarian fight. It was it was badass. I did not like the heroic mechanic, but in general, it's a fucking awesome fight. An amazing, amazing first attempt. I thought as we get to the final phase, we can't be stopped. To everyone's surprise, his fucking health is getting lower and lower. There were several casts of Shadow Blaze Spark by the time we got him to 10%, with three DPS dead. Next comes Davy, 8%. The Holy Pally dies, it's at 5%. At this point, I just pop every hot on the tank and whoever is left and switch to using Wrath and Moonfire. Four, three, two, one. I die, the DPS die, Hugs Optional dies, but my boy Ladude, my boy fucking Ladude pushes forth. He strikes down the mighty dragon with a final blow. And the fight against the Lord of Blackrock is won. We get the achieve for completing 10-man Blackwing Descent Normal. The loot for Nefarian is nice. Akmin Karai, Dominion Shield. It drops for Ladude and everyone is saying grats for it's an upgrade and a beaut. That is until, un until of course, Hugs Optional chimes in. <laughs> Excuse me, if you wouldn't mind, could you give that shield to Davy, the DPS warrior, for his off-spec? He's working on getting some tank gear for us, and that would be a rather large upgrade for him, wouldn't it? There's a pause, a silence in voice comms. Until our boy Ladude, the hero of the hour, by the way, speaks up. No. You already did something weird like this last raid. I'm not doing it again. I'm not going to give items to someone for an off spec when a main spec guy needs it. <sighs> then I'm afraid you can't be here anymore. You're not worthy, you see, Ladude. You're not worthy to raid with my members. If you can't follow what your master is saying, how could you be a part of our guild? What is... What? 
You're, in, you're encouraging, like, really weird rules, and none of us like it. <laughs> none of you like it? Is that so? Does anybody else here wish to speak up? Yeah, me. It's kind of fucking stupid, and you should stop doing whatever it is the fuck you're doing. This is his main spec. He killed the fucking boss. Like, it let him have it. That was Davy talking. Hugs optional has kicked Davy from the guild. Anyone else care to rattle their little tongue? Uh, yeah, you're out of your fucking mind. Hugs optional has kicked Rob from the guild. This is so fucking stupid, I say. Oh, little duck. One more word and I dominate you in every way you can't even imagine. Fuck off. Hope's optional removes me from the guild. Keep in mind, we're still in the party. Because Ladude was the one who started the group. And is also still the master looter. Fuck it. Loots himself the shield. Distributes the rest of the items between me, Davy, Rob, and anyone else we see being removed from the guild. Hugs Optional screams that we are ninjas looting her raid and that we are no longer welcome in her presence. Okay. We leave the group and party up and go and do some dungeons. We hung out with Ladude and Rob for the rest of the night. Ladude eventually moved to another server that actually had people trying to prog faster than this fucking shithole we were in. I never saw Rob again. Davy and I did Legion and Buffer together. Well, since neither of us was, uh, neither of those expansions were much fun, we stepped away. He's currently beta testing for some other MMO, and I'm playing single player games to pass the boredom. Looking back, though, I've thought about this more than more. Yes, it was bizarre. It was weird. But, and this is why I approach you today, Preach and the PG community. We were on an RP server. Yes, a dead RP server. An RP server that didn't really do RP. An RP server that had been commandeered to be a PvE realm. Do you think she was just RPing? It would make sense if she was RPing as some mistress, dominatrix or something. But she never indicated she was RPing. She never asked about RPing. Maybe it was a power thing and she was just generally an egocentric maniac. I don't know. I currently don't have time to play WoW or pour in as much time as I'm now engaged and I'm helping plan my wedding. But I would love to know the opinions of the jury on this matter. Hmm. Uh, RP stops when the raid starts. Right. But I agree. We have a shitload of RPers in our community. We have had countless RP stories sent into drama time. There's also awful RPers. Isn't there? There's also awful RPers. I am not convinced there is not a chance that in her mind she believed she was some mistress of the dark trying to do something. Hmm. But I think ultimately she's also an asshole. RP or not? Guilty of being an asshole. Regardless of what's going on guilty of being an arsehole and <laughs> i think we can all agree on that i declare her guilty on all charges rpers are absolutely not lunatics it depends who you meet like a lot of the rpers we have around here are actually having a way better time with most games than most people and they're doing some really cool shit i have been and i have experienced it i have seen it it's good stuff it's good stuff uh we did not have the Slipknot guild didn't come up in that story. I guess that was the name of the Cataclysm guild, but it didn't come up. So we'll keep the Slippery Knot. I'm asked for a guild name here. Uh, and our final story for tonight. Well, is this from Dragonflight? We've already got drama from Dragonflight. Oh my God. Uh, is this the one you... Okay. Idiots and dragons. <laughs> okay. I mean, Dragonflight's been out in just a few days. <laughs> Sorry, something happened, happened. <laughs> Drama flight? I don't know. It's been out for four days. Oh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Hello, Mikey and the jury! Oh, God, do the gavels need it again? This tale is about dragons, but it is not about dragonfly. Okay. This is a tale of a drama that came from a long-forgotten lost MMO. Oh, no. 
Yes. Lord of the Rings Online. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, I don't have much experience with Lord of the Rings Online. I have about three hours of playtime in that game and did not like it. Uh, and following the release of its third expansion, Rise of Isengard. For those that don't know, Lord of the Rings Online had the great misfortune of releasing its first expansion, The Mines of Moria, at the same time Wrath of the Lich King came out. Oof. <laughs> what was the release dates? Online, Mines of Moria release date. That's an oof. Okay, Mines of Moria came out the 18th of November. And... Wrath of the Lich King release date. Oh god, it came out the same day? No, it came out five days after Wrath of the Lich King. Wrath of the Lich King was the 13th of November 2008. And they released the Mines of Moria expansion on the 18th of November. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Fuck. That's really grim. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> that's what? That's when WoW's rocking, what, 12 million players? Mmm. Mmm. At its absolute peak. <clears throat> it explains why Lord of the Rings Online went free to play shortly after the expansions released. <laughs> Feel free to judge me. I'm okay with my actions and would likely take the same route had things gone the same way again. The court may disagree. Okay. Feel free to have the chat pick our guild name, but I would prefer... Oh, maybe we can't use the slippery knot. Okay. Feel free to have your chat pick our guild name, but I would prefer if the names for the players involved stay as the chosen ones from the Lord of the Rings trilogy... The names have been changed to protect the stupid. I'm also going to try to put this into a wow terminology so your audience can connect with what I'm saying. All right. I can't pronounce some of these words. This is already too much Tolkien for my liking. Or Tolkien. How do I say this? Help. Help. It looks Welsh to me. <laughs> that looks super... That looks turbo Welsh. Drachach. Drachach. I don't know. Draycock. Mm. Red drag Draygock. Oh, it's actually Drake Drake Dracock. Okay. <sighs> For this tale, the encounter that caused the drama was the release of the first true dragon fight, where we go after the great dreadworm Draygock in his lair. Clearly inspired by a what if you could fight Smau in his lair? That alternated between everyone running around the outside of the arena. Think about something like a Roman Colosseum. With a tank and healer holding aggro on the dragon. While everyone else attacks the claws to knock the dragon down to the open arena. To further attack and harass it. And alternating between the two areas. All in all, a rather fun and unique fight. On part with many of the FF14 trial fights. Albeit a bit janky and buggy as were most things in Lord of the Rings Online. So the guild that I was in at the time was formed from a merge of the core group of players I had first found when I'd started the MMO. We were all friends, and many of us were good enough at our respective classes that we could do much of the content and do it well. Unfortunately, numbers, numbers, numbers. Numbers are always a problem, which is why the guild that I was in when all this went down was a merger between my original guild and another one which included the four players, Jersey, Trey Number, Sonolith, and Dimmy. So the merge of guilds had occurred shortly, uh, shortly during the long stretch after the second expansion's launch, when Lord of the Rings Online was changing from sub-based to free-to-play. And we had started up the raid team within the guild using some of the older level 60 and 65 instances, since 65 was the level cap at the time. Prior expansion was plus five level cap increase, which means that 60 content was easier and good for training, but still lethal if you didn't obey mechanics. There were warning signs already as a few of the players in the group from the guild were merged into. Or players they had picked up along the way were fucking terrible. Like, not only just badly geared, but dog shit. And we needed to carry them. Which, of course, meant that when the final 65 raid released, we struggled. We really struggled to clear it because they kept fucking up over and over again. And our damage was not there. But we perse persevered. We pushed on. We kept beating our heads against the wall and finally cleared one of the four wings. 
before the start of the test server and the release of the next expansion. Oh, that's really sad. One of four wings before the next expansion. Bummer. Let's fast forward then to the test server ahead of the next expansion's release. I was helping to test and debug Greg Och and be able to play with the best of the best across the entire MMO US side. Let's take a bit. Let's look at a video of this fight. So we all know where we're going. So we can all picture it. Because I want to know what it looks like anyway. Dragoch. Okay. We've got a full run here. Let's have a look, see. Hey, it's so Nixia. Avert thine eyes. Looks like... Uh, oh, talent trees? Already better than FF? Shocker. Swolbo. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Uh. Yike. Well, we do have our MMO competition coming up, but uh, I'm not... This, this ain't it. Uh, this ain't it. Is this most of the fight? Is it dead? Okay, so it jumps up and then it jumps down and there's a stompy stompy. Yeah, I don't think Lord of the Rings is really in our future. I want this game one, yikers. <laughs> okay, so it comes here and then they're attacking the... Okay, so you can see the other players. So the tank tanks it up here seemingly without a healer. I guess this looks like a tank to me. And the rest of the players attack its feet and toes to get it to fall down. Is this its health bar? How long does it take to kill this fucking 23 minutes? Holy shit. That can't be its health bar, right? They're about they're gonna kill it soon. The fuck? There's no way. Oh, its head's got different health. That's just the head. Is this not a health bar? It keeps going back to full. I'm so confused. All right, his body's on like 50%. Maybe you just stun the head and then it regens. Your know, fellowship attempts to strike Dragok with a final blow. Did we win? Nothing's happening. What? What's going on? This... Have they paused? I don't know what the fuck is going on. It looks like they paused the game. And then they just kill it? Lag? I don't think so. They were like coordinating something in chat. And it's dead. Uh, and maybe I do need to play this. I don't know what the hell is going on. Now they're running up. I don't know. <laughs> All right, but we've seen the fight. We now know what we're looking at. I don't know. That is weird. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's uh, that's going to be a tricky one for me to follow. Okay. <clears throat> so, he's on the beta server to test this fight. And I was helping to test the debug, the Dragoch fight. I'd be able to play with the best of the best across the entire MMO US side. EU and US couldn't play together at the time due to technical reasons. And notable for this dragon fight was it being the first to use the group attack mechanic, Fellowship Maneuver. Right, so that was the new mechanic there. What we just saw, where it looked like they paused the game, was a new feature they added to the game. And you had to complete a specific set of 12 of these attacks to complete the hard mode, which resulted in more loot from the boss. So I was making notes, compiling the list of group attacks to share with anyone that was there as I was decent at generating guides. And I was hopeful that the guild would be able to springboard using my work and research to kill the dragon faster and get prepared for the raid later in the expansion to stop Saruman's efforts in the, uh, into ring research at all thank before the March of the Ents. That was my hope. I thought we were going to be badass. So 
With our cast of characters, Solilith and Dimmy are a US Navy family. And while I have great respect for the servicemen, but as the timing would have it, Sonolith was going to be assigned to a ship several months after expansion launch, leaving Dimmy behind and us without our main tank for at least six months or more, which meant we needed a new player. Let's fast forward to the expansion launch. I had completed my perfect Dragok guide and gotten the last of the 12 group attacks and had also cleared the fight several times on the on the beta and got on my cloak from it along with any gear that I had needed for my captain at the time. Around this time, Jersey confided in me, uh, confided in me late, one, no that, had confided in me late, while it was pretty well known that the guild in Tenumbra and Jersey were a couple, uh-oh, that Jersey was actively trying to convince Tenumbra to leave her husband. I don't think I've ever wanted to deck someone that badly despite being nowhere near them once I'd found out that he was actively trying to break up a marriage. It took all I could do to remain calm and collected on Ventrilo. Time goes on. And most of the group has finished leveling to 75 and getting gear. So I get asked by Jersey to determine the list of classes needed for the raid content and figure out the group comp for Dragoch. Curiously, I was not asked to populate the roster based off who was in the guild. Having had a guide that several other officers had told me we weren't going to use because we wanted to raid blind, that's fair. Wouldn't be the first time I've had a guide in the second monitor and fed it to them as we went, so... Okay, I mean, don't just tell them. They want to raid blind. That's okay. That's okay. It was a surprisingly easy task, and I provided him the recommendations of two groups of a tank, healer, captain, burglar, and two DPS, melee preferred because of the fight. And I even went so far as to recommend that if the second group's captain was spec for healing, as captains are a hybrid that could spec towards tanking, healing, or DPS, depending on what we needed, we could fit in another damage dealer. I was rather happy that we were finally getting to this as a group with a proper comp and hopeful that we could quickly get through the fight and on to Orthanc, since we had worked through most of the issues before and most everyone was actually on the ball and doing the needed grinds to be decently well geared for raiding. So before going on, it may help your audience to better understand why that recommendation was in place. And a better analogy of those classes, specifically burglars are basically rogues that are able to reliably proc group attacks, needed to satisfy the hard mode challenge by having the two groups alternate between proccing group attacks to get attacks in a rather short amount of time. The captains, as you may have already guessed, are hybrids that are off healers with low personal DPS, but do so much group buffs that a single captain in a group will greatly increase group DPS to the point that one is mandatory. Although more than one captain in a group doesn't work well because their buffs don't overwrite, and the lower personal DPS will result in a net loss. The other class to keep in mind is a champion, which is basically a WoW Fury warrior. Dual wielding that could also tank while dual wielding like classic WoW. The wrinkle in all of this is that I am a captain. And having seen what it took to get the captain geared for raiding, I couldn't be fucking arsed. <laughs> I didn't have the time nor drive to get an alt leveled and up the gear level I felt comfortable raiding on because of the grinds that were very heavily time and RNG dependent needed to do something like, like a WoW legendary. So I could only run as a captain, which suited me as that was my preferred class. And one that I felt I was actually pretty good on, or so I was told. So I'm greatly confused when Jersey rejects my class list. He finds it unacceptable that I have two captains in it and don't have a single champion. I was told that I was being selfish because he felt I had written myself into a guaranteed raid spot by putting a captain in each group. No, no, no. I tried to explain the buffs and that we're going to have higher raid DPS by doing this because we get more group attacks, right? Yes, my personal damage will be lower, but we get more of the new mechanic. The new group attacks works. No. Jersey wasn't having any of it. He accused me of being a selfish piece of shit because my damage was going to be dog shit compared to just rolling a champion and I should replace myself. No. I may have been being stubborn, but I wasn't going to budge. And I tried to explain to him and say, if you go as a tank, 
We could convince that my friend that was a tank to go on a different class. This has got leveled. And we could do it that way and everybody can be in and we get to do the hard mode and we all get more loot, right? Jersey's response was that it'd be a cold day in hell before he ever tanked a fucking thing. And I'll be honest with you, Mike. I have never heard someone start crapping themselves so quickly. As I'm not sure if that suggestion was flat out refused because the prospect of Jersey tanking on his champion was either something that greatly disgusted him or terrified him. I proceed to then take him through the entire list of people in the guild and thus doing the job that he was going to have to have Sonolith do. And I built out a candidate list. Who's going to go where for the raid? Showing them that he's got nothing to fear from the signups because he's on a good DPS class for the encounter. There's enough DPS slots open that even if we want a second healer for safety, he still has a space. No. I was getting berated. I was no longer a team player, he said. My comp was just there to make it so that I would have a raid spot all the time and was actually making our group worse. Jersey, Jersey, I've done this fight multiple times. I've been beta testing this thing for a while. I wrote the fucking guide for this fight. I have already killed it so many times. Really? Then you're wrong still. And your guide must be shit. I should put a Fury Warrior in the class list for that fight because you've got two useless classes together. We talked about this from about 11 p.m. till 2 a.m. in the morning, at which point I realized that he's a fucking idiot. He's never going to grasp this new mechanic. I've explained it to him so many goddamn times. I've linked him guides. I've linked him everything showing how this works. And this is probably going to lead to a failure. To that end, I never wavered in giving him exactly what he asked for and not changing it to what I thought was Jersey's selfish request. I was also weighing that we were going to be losing Sonolith as he was going to be shipped out in two months. And also the truth of the relationship between Jersey and Tanumbra, which was kept in confidence at the time, at least for several years until I was asked about exactly why I had left by the, uh, from the guild friend. To be very honest, I was getting tired of dealing with this mess and wondering why I'm tolerating assholes when I was far more successful literally freelancing and pugging on the server than this guild's raids. I was there like many other MMOs. My friends were there. They weren't great, but they were there. I made the decision to leave the guild. As far as I can recall, it's the only time I've ever actually rage quit a guild despite playing MMOs for almost the past 20 years, starting with Vanilla WoW. Over the next couple of days, I was contacted by friends who were still there. I told them that I felt I could no longer be a part of the guild led by Jersey. And rather than creating even more drama and likely ripping the guild apart, I told them they should decide what to do on their own. Because I honestly didn't want to undermine the guild's raid team, despite how I felt about the leader. I was burned out by this. I shelved Lord of the Rings on time for the time being and hopped into Star Wars, which was great fun and a good change of pace. Once I had my fill of being a Jedi in age long past, I looked at Lord of the Rings online again, only to find that my guild that I had left behind was now a shadow of what it was. Apparently, after I had left for a vacation into Star Wars, almost all of the guild leadership that wasn't from my group of friends left as well. They all fucked off to Star Wars. It crippled the entire raid team. I'd also heard from my, some of my friends that Trenumbra was pregnant with child. And when that had happened, she'd fucked off from Lord of the Rings. And rumor has it, she'd also fucked Jersey off as well. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you should leave him. I'm pregnant. Okay. <clears throat> My friends in the guild dropped from there and reformed in one of the other older guilds that we were in for a time. After getting myself back to my usual level of endgame gearing as I took pride in being as well geared as I could, I was ready to take on the newest raid and joined up with the raid team I had worked with on the test server. I raided with them for a time, but I hated how much Lord of the Rings raiding felt like another job. I hated it. So I told the leader, I'm not doing this. Thanked them and left. I parted as amicably as I could. I think part of that came from the continual captain itemization issues where the dev team couldn't figure out how to make shit for them. It needed stats that worked for multiple things. And it didn't help that all the best gear for my class wasn't found in the raid. So raiding was pointless. 
basically all I could ever get from progress raiding in Lord of the Rings Online was the mount for when we actually finished it and a cosmetic cloak. I think part of me was starting to move on. The sad thing with raiding in Lord of the Rings was that this would be the last true raid tier released for a very, very long time. Once they moved the level cap to 85 with the next expansion, the Riders of Rohan, the raiders were given a rather half-assed raid tier. The devs were listening to casuals on the forums and decided it would be a great move to remove loot lockouts. To the surprise of no one, the raiding guilds farmed out the raids in an entire weekend after that change went live. <laughs> Can you imagine no loot lock on Mythic Raiding? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> and I'm fully geared. <laughs> and then a month later, almost all of them quit the game because there was nothing to do. The next expansion, Helm's Deep, would be the death knell for what was once the big three US servers known as the Jeweled Bell. And it turned into a ghost town. Yeah. Pretty much like that with splits. No, nah, I mean, you still have mythic, mythic gear to chase for weeks and weeks, but if you could just reset and farm the same boss over and over again, Jesus Christ. Over these two expansions, many of my friends just split off and did other things, and I've lost contact with them. While I'm quite the unrepentant bastard about all of it, part of me does wonder if I should have caved to Jersey rather than being my stubborn self and stuck with my friends for what would be their last hurrah of the raiding scene in Lord of the Rings. So I wonder, should I have caved? Or should I have, and should I have just stuck it out and watched them fail and maybe they would have changed their minds? I mean, no, not really. If your man doesn't understand how limit break fellowship account is, bloodlust works. No, not really. No, that's just uh, not worth your time. It's, well, the problem is, when I hear things about this, I hear I hear about this kind of stuff all the time, especially in World of Warcraft and uh, a little bit in Final Fantasy, but not as much. A real stubbornness to... I mean, this is for people as well. To accept that you're wrong. I imagine your man Jersey realized he was wrong pretty early in the conversation, but he's the leader. And leaders, in some people's eyes, can't be wrong. And that's the wall you hit. And nothing you're going to say is going to make any fucking difference whatsoever. Because the leader can't be wrong. Even if he reads it and sees the change and all that kind of stuff. The leader just cannot be wrong. It's not possible. And you just end up stuck in this stupid fucking circle where you, you're like, yeah, but clearly it doesn't work that way. And they're like, well, we'll try it anyway. And then maybe we'll adapt it or blah, blah, blah. It's just a pain in the ass and no one wants to deal with it. But that's okay. That makes the end of drama for today, but not the end of the stream because in just a few hours, in like under four hours, we'll be with Mr. Rich Campbell and Mr. Asmon Gold for All Craft. We'll be shooting the shit about all sorts of cool stuff with Dragonflight. It's going to be a fun night. I'm looking forward to see what the boys think. Uh, I haven't actually asked them about Dragonflight. I don't know what they've been up to. Uh, so it should be a fun old night. All Craft is usually a lot of fun with all three of us. So hopefully you come and tune in and uh, see what it's like. Or don't and you can catch it on youtube or don't and you don't need to watch it all it's entirely up to you depending on what you're doing on your friday night but i hope to see you there all right so i will be on i think we're on asmon's channel or oh, riches one of the two uh and uh yeah it won't, it won't be on this channel i'll host it though so it's easy go all right be good i'll see you later guys bye bye